For those of you that don't know me, my name is Marie Humbert and I'm an actress. Um, I had an idea a couple of uh, years ago, actually, when I was sitting down with a friend and we were talking about how in Ghana we don't share our stories, like our creative stories. And that, you know, we always feel like, you know, you can't, you're not in a safe space. So, number one, front back is one of those spaces for me. Um, I feel like the way forward uh, for Africa and Africans is to collaborate and work together and share each other's like struggles and stories. And this place really resonates uh, because it's a collaboration made by over 40 artisans uh, from the continent, but also the diaspora. So it's, it's, it's trying to promote African excellence, which is why I have this beautiful lady next to me tonight. Yes, a big round of applause because her name is Aisha Obuobi. Obu, Obuobi, yes. I oh, I am, oh, sorry, oh, sorry. I am, I am Sue, I am Sue. And she is the founder uh, and creative director of Christy Brown. So without further ado, please, another round of applause for Aisha. And uh, we'll, we'll get right into it. So Aisha, please tell us a little bit about yourself where did you grow up and what was your first, you know, fashion moment? Like the moment you realized that you loved everything about fashion. Ah, wow. So I'm an Accra girl. I grew up here. I've lived here all my life. I went to Morningstar, Ashimota, and then Ligon. So um, that's, you know, a, a background. I come from, I think it's a very interesting family. My parents are very liberal. And I'm saying this because I know that's probably what shaped or, or formed how I think and so on. Parents very liberal. My name is Aisha. We're not Muslim. We're not from the north. They just love the name. So it's, it's one of those households where you were allowed to be you and your thoughts, were, your thoughts and your opinions were valid. That's my background in that regard. I am um, one of two kids. I have a brother. He's here somewhere in Anado. Aisha's brother. Yes, my, my big brother. And um, I'm married to Michael, who's here. And we, <laughs> and we have three amazing children. I know everybody thinks their kids are amazing, but. <laughs> so I grew up in Accra, and just backtracking, the name Christy Brown is actually my grandmother's name, okay? She, um, she's Ga from the coast, same piece, so hence the brown. And she was a seamstress all her life. And we lived with her, like, I, we, I stayed with my grandmother. I mean, we all lived with her till I, I was about eight years or so. We grew up around her and her pieces of fabric. You'd learn to thread her machine and yeah. all of that. So I, I, ha I know that, that that was my first interaction with fashion. And she had all these catalogs, the Macaws and Vogue catalogs and so on. And she'd make me clothes from there. And I don't know if you remember, there, there's even a picture of me as a toy. Even, um, Fancy dress parties, she would make the costumes and then I was a tomato, can you imagine? <laughs> Round with, with a bonnet. So that's, I'm sure that's where I was first exposed yeah. to fashion, but I've always loved it. I was that person, or in university, or even in, in secondary school, who would have the same clothes as everyone else, but I'll always add something else to it. Or I'll make a slit somewhere and jazz up an outfit, and it's like, ah, oh, but where did you get yours? I'm like, ah, it's the same one. <laughs> the same one you have, I just, you know, added. Yeah my flair to it so it's you know that, that that's how it started speaking speaking of university i know you studied psychology i did I actually like i mean so and and so christy brown is it is that was that your grandmother's name yes christy okay. brown was my grandmother's name so you paid so honor to her with to her with it but it was it was that um that sense of duty to own our narrative and, and kind of tell the story our way because I, I was tired of seeing pictures of, of African kids with flies yeah. on there. Yeah, on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, no, I know a different kind of woman. I know a different kind of woman who's around me. My mother, she's a, she's a very strong, yeah. opinionated woman. My grandmothers, both of them. So I'm like, they're not, they're not 
timid in any way. They haven't been marginalized in any way. They, their opinions matter. They, you know, they, sh they, 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 they can run our homes, right? So I thought, you know what, let's, let's, let's do this. Let, yeah. let, me, let me launch this brand. Let's, let me start this brand to speak to that, to speak to that, that African woman, that audacious African woman. What about, what about in terms of clothing, in terms of your brand, Christy yeah. Brown, where do, you, where do you draw your inspir inspiration from? In where in and everywhere, really. Yeah. Um, the woman inspires me a lot. Mm -hmm. the, Chris, the idea of the Christy Brown woman in my head, who is, again, very, she has this innate confidence. And I speak about her like I know her, <laughs> because I want, I want to be her. But she has this innate confidence, and this, she's just, and it's not, it doesn't have anything to do with how much money she has. Yeah. You know, it, it's just, it, it just comes from right there. Right, and why she's so comfortable say, why, in her skin. Well, why do you say you want to be her? Because I mean, you you clearly oh, are. No, 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 no. I mean, let's be real. <laughs> no, 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 no. no, but I do want to be her because I, I guess in my head she she's this ideal woman or this ideal character. But then as you grow up, you realize that you know what, we all have our flaws and we we'll go through different stages in life. But she's the biggest inspiration. Yeah. Now, I'm also v I'm very spiritual. Like I'm a tongue-speaking, Holy Ghost-filled Christian. And I honestly, I, I know for a fact that a lot of the inspiration I get is from God. Yeah. And I'm not sitting here as one of those, oh, yes, I want to thank God for this. But I know very, I'm very connected that way. And it's, it's just how things happen. Or I might be taking a certain path, right? Or I might be walking somewhere. Let me just give you an example. Um, one time, we had gone fabric sourcing. And and this wasn't in Ghana, it was in, in China. And there were so many like um, mopeds and motorbikes and so on. And I was trying, I was looking for Lycra. So in my head, I was like, I need to find Lycra. And I thought it would be in this side of the market. I was trying to get there. But all these guys zipping and crisscrossing, I had to kind of jump out of the way yeah. and moved in a different direction. Looked up, it was a Lycra store. And if you know China and these markets, it's huge. And it's very hard to find anything. Right? So I honestly believe that this path that I'm on is divinely orchestrated. Yeah. So even to do with inspiration, there was one time we had a collection that was inspired by Sound of Music. Mm -hmm. It's not as though I just sat there and thought, oh, Sound of Music, you know, where did that come from? Yeah. But it's, as, as you go into yourself, you, you pray and, try and connect and like, okay, what's the next direction for the collection? Then I go and visit my parents. They're watching reruns of Sound of Music. I'm like, hmm. Oh. I, I totally, I totally agree with you because me as yeah. an actress, I, I find myself in similar situations. Yes. Like sometimes I feel like you know when I'm on stage or when I'm on set, yeah. like accidents and me, I, I have a big problem with that because I'm a perfectionist. But like accidents will happen, and then all all of a sudden that created something, something amazing, amazing that exactly. you never even expected, yep. or something will pop along where you had an idea yes. of that, and, and then this it strings and along, yes. and then yeah. you see that different yeah. happenings, different yeah. things okay that like lead you. To yeah. To that eureka moment yeah. so it's a lot of it is, i think is also quite spiritual yeah. you use a lot of african print i in, love yeah i, I mean, love in what? your <laughs> beautiful and i'm wearing some as well um where do you source your materials where where do you locally especially for for wax prints we source them on the local market okay so we actually okay maybe now i don't get to go to makala's often mm -hmm. but I used to do all the fabric sourcing myself. I'll go walk through, feel everything, make sure that, you know, I'm connecting with it. Now, of course, we have help. You have, you know, assistants who send you pictures, but I can still tell if it's a print I, I, I like. Yeah. I, lo I love wax print. It's not, it's just my thing. Do you think that as an African designer, it's more powerful for you to use African print? I mean, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of, not controversy, but there's a lot of people expecting African designers sort to, to use African print and African fabric in their designs. Mm. And I find, personally, I find that a little bit like, but we're s that, that doesn't really make sense because no. a designer is a designer and you yeah. just should follow whatever you I feel, you know. To. And we so have so many other textiles. But, right? I do, but, but I do know something though. Well, I do know that when I, when I wear African print or African fabric, mm -hmm. as a half African woman, I feel so, like there's there's just something electric in my body, <laughs> like I just I don't know it's if anybody agrees with me or an, an, yeah. anybody feels that way. Yeah, coming back to that, like, do you feel like you're wearing African print right now? Do you yeah. feel 
like there's a different sort of vibe. Like I don't know how to explain I, I it. I personally love it. I was saying that my grandmother is a big inspiration. Yeah. So growing up around her, she's from Accra. She's from the coast. She doesn't do kinti or fugu or any other. It, it, what I saw her wear was wax prints and her friends. So my first connection to like ha fashion or in terms of textile was with wax print. And I think, you know, that's why it stuck with me so much. And I actually love just the mix of colors. And yeah, and I, I think as a brand, we've kind of mastered how to use it and yeah. mix it with other, yeah, other you fabrics. And you so. definitely, and I think that that's what you do with Christy Brown. I think that a lot of people, when they see your designs, they might be like, oh my God, that's a lot of, that's a lot of, you know, that's a lot of uh, different patterns and everything. But actually, when you put it all together, it's just, it kind of works, yes, doesn't it? it like works. a snake skin and the stripes. Like what I'm wearing right now, but like, you know what I mean? It's, it's just, a, and I love the fact that you mix, like, this is silk on one side and this is African, African print on another and it's amazing. I think the topic, we're going to enter something a little bit delicate, but okay. I, I feel like we should talk about it. And I, it's a question that I ask most of the designers that I, that I host. Right. is what are your thoughts uh, on the topic of cultural appreciation versus cultural appropriation? Um, and the current like important debate about whether international fashion houses exploit African culture. I mean, because it's been ongoing for <laughs> some time. It has been. Oh, wow. <laughs> Sorry, it's a touchy up. topic, isn't it? Um, and I'm just, you know, I'm just trying to be careful how I approach this. But my personal thoughts are, I don't see why any fashion brand, whether it's from Europe, from China, Australia, can't look to the beauty we have on the continent and take inspiration from it yeah. to come up with a collection. If they decide to go a step further and they've seen a beautiful textile, or print from the continent that they felt, oh, you know, I'd like to interpret it my way, you know, that speaks to my brand and my audience. I personally don't see any reason why not, mm -hmm. you see. Mm -hmm. But I know there's this whole who have, well, they are taking it from us and so on. And my thing is, can we focus on building our industry and making it stronger? So my thing is, no problem. Inspiration is inspiration. Sometimes we make kimonos and so on. It comes from all of, you know, wherever, the Orient, or we might use Chinese-inspired fabrics or silks and whatnot. How do we focus on our industry and our brands and grow it? Collaborate yeah. with our creatives on the continent. Get I ourselves a solid fashion industry yeah. on the continent. How yeah. do we sell to each other? How do we even make it easy? I always say it's easier for me to ship to London than to ship to, to somebody in Angola. Why? Like, so how are we yeah. taking care of our business? Because we can, we can make noise and be upset that no, don't use my print. But okay, so, so, so let's do something with it. Let's capitalize on it yeah. as well. So that's my take. No, I, and I think, so that, yeah. I, I think that for me, it's, it's more uh, under the line of like picking your battles. Uh, no, of course, uh, for me, I, I also find myself feeling, you know, very frustrated as well when I see that it's blatantly uh, exploited, you know what I mean? And, and not paid, paid res the due respect, right. for sure. Right. But, for example, if we were to talk about, a, you know, recently, well, not so long ago with Stella McCartney, and, you know, she, uh, for those of you who don't know, she uh, used African fabric in, in one of her collections, and she had two um, women of color walking down the runway. And first people attacked her by saying, why do you only have two women of color walking down the runway wearing African print? And then they attacked her for using African print. And then, you know, it was a whole, like, a whole mm -hmm. thing. So w w in respects to that, um, I just feel like there's, there's inspiration, you know what I mean? Which, right. is, which, which is a fair thing. And it's like when we're all wearing kimonos, and we see a lot of, Af you know, African designers creating kimonos with African print. It's like, do we need to pay? I mean, you, we're not. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. this, it's just, it's a very delicate. It's, delicate. it's very delicate, it's and delicate. it's a very fine line. Yeah. But uh, I'd love to hear what other people think about this. Absolutely. This is my, I guess coming from, you know, what my mindset is. I mean, I'm big on us building what we have here on the mm -hmm. continent. Let's just do our thing. Do it so well that others just look to us like, wow. Or, or if we gain even more attention because 
endure, you know, spotlighted one thing or the other from here. When they want the, the authentic, like, African aesthetic or, oh, but what else is there on the continent? We have solid brands that show up and show out. How, how, how do we do that? Or solid creatives who, who, who tell great visual stories, right? So it's, it's us, like, nurturing that. Trust me, that's, that's where my headspace is on it. Well, it, it brings me to my next, to, to what I wanted to talk next. I, I, what do you think needs to change? In, like, how, what are your thoughts about the Ghana fashion industry? And what do you think that needs to be our focus in order for us to grow and, and thrive? Because right now I feel like we're at a standstill. And you know what I mean? I mean, I think it's better. Obviously, it's, it's better than, than a couple of years. Than 10 years ago. But for example, you know, I would even add another question to this. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts about, you know, the, uh, what was it? The Ghana Fashion and Design Week? Uh, Aqua Fashion and Design Week? When was it? I can't remember. You see, this is, my, this is my thing, I but I heard about that. But, you know, yeah. and I was like, oh, yay. But then again, nothing really followed up. So, mm. you know, what are your, what are your thoughts about your thoughts about the Ghana fashion industry? What, I was what funny, I was having this conversation on? with a friend of mine earlier today. You know, we have a lot of creatives and we have a lot of brands that are springing up um, all over the place, right? But I don't think we are collaborating enough mm -hmm. to make the industry right. Do you see what I mean? Because it's not just the designers. You have the brands. Yes, you have the designers, and everybody's churning out one thing or the other. But our stylists, our photographers, you know, all the other careers or other fields that make the industry ripe, what's happening there? Where are buyers? Who, 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 who is stocking these brands? Because, you know, bottom line is we do need to make money. And that's yeah. why, you know, we're in business, right? So how are we making sure that the entire value chain is covered? And that, those are the conversations that we need to be having. Then also, brands or designers just honing in on having a unique aesthetic, mm -hmm. okay? Because mm -hmm. we, need, we need disruption, we need newness. We need, yeah. I mean, we don't need another Christy Brown, or, you know, there are yeah. quite a few. <laughs> but we, we, like, we need newness, we need brands to, I, I should be able to spot another brand and know that, oh, that must be a so-so uh, and so, or that must be a Pistis, or that must be a Bello Edu, or, you know, it's, we need to get to that point where designers just have a unique aesthetic, they hone in on it, they perfect it, and then also, how are we collaborating with other creatives to make this work? There are so many young people who have amazing minds. How are we giving them a chance to make, exactly. you know, to, to tell the story? Yeah whether it's visually or in any, whichever, whichever mode they use, how are we allowing them to do that? I, think I just want to mention some of like, y the amazing achievements and awards that, you've, that, you've, that you have. Uh, you were a member uh, of the panel at the Africa Economic Forum on Fashion Development at Columbia University, as well as Harvard Business School African Business Conference. At the World Economic Forum, Global Shapers. Yes, you I won was a Global Shaper, actually. Okay, yeah. Yes. <laughs> you first won the Emerging Designer of the Year at Arise Fashion Week, which you just mentioned in mm -hmm. South Africa, and recently the African Designer of the Year at the Glitz Styles Awards in Ghana. You've been featured in magazines such as Vogue, Harper's Bazaar, Elle, the UK Times, the African Report, just to name a few, by the way. You were featured in CN on CNN African Voices. Your designs have been worn by Michelle Obama. Uh, and Michelle, yes, and Alicia Keys <laughs> Alicia and Keys, Beyonce yes. for her Mrs. Carter World Tour. Yes, okay. Drum roll. And so please, like, uh, no, but a bigger round of applause, please, guys. I mean, that's amazing. That's amazing. No, but I want to speak to that, right? So imagine if, if we continue the way we were. And if, now I have a business partner. Yeah. I have, I have, um, and Vanessa, she's, she couldn't be with us um, today. But Vanessa joined the yeah, brand yeah. in um, 2012, well, two years, two years after I launched. Because she saw her friend struggling that emails weren't getting answered. Um, and, and we're missing opportunities to do amazing stuff. And she's like, you know what, my friend needs the help. So at the time, it was, how, how, how can we work together? It wasn't, you know, it, it wasn't as formal in the beginning. But eventually, Vanessa got a job in fashion in Montreal. And she didn't live in Ghana. So imagine, we were working remotely. So Pierre, that, that's what shows you how, 
we just had to make it work, right? So we were working remotely, she would respond to certain emails, certain responses, and then she was working as a buyer. So now she was gaining the understanding of the business of fashion, what the numbers mean, what are your staples, what are the, the, the pieces that actually make you money, Aisha, where should you be focusing your attention? And then I, on the other hand, had someone I could offload some of the stuff that I didn't want to deal with, or you know, didn't have the headspace to deal with onto her. And growing from that, just even allowing people in, having a team now, you have assistants, you have creatives who bring a lot to the plate, Kobe, the Nathaniels, the Quakers, it's, um, and, and, and there's one key person, and I don't know if she's here, is Gladys here? I think she's, she's inside. She's, she's inside. the real MVP. Yeah, she is. Gladys, she can sell ice to an Eskimo. Gladys, we love you wherever you are. And she was my first, first PA ever. Now, we started from my parents' study yeah. in my parents' house, right? And can you imagine all the mothers and the kids? So somehow we made it work. Today, Gladys manages our retail store. But imagine if I didn't have mm. all these people coming into the brand to help support or like build this right. dream. I, I don't think we'll be... It takes anywhere. a village. It takes, it takes a, village. a village. So it all this, oh, I am the designer. You know how people are very, like, I want to be the big shot. I want to be the face of everything. I'm the big shot designer. You actually need a solid team. Yeah. Beyonce, when we got that email for them, for, oh, we, we need the pieces for <laughs> the Mrs. Carter to Francis. Francis Boku is here. I wasn't even in Ghana. I was in Paris, you know, doing some show. I think it was maybe one of the Arise stuff. I thought it was a joke. But no, it was Beyonce's people. Like, we had to make this happen. I'm not here. Okay, the tailors are like, okay, Gladys, how, how do we first coordinate fabric? Then my, <laughs> my husband and, Fra and Francis basically carrying fabric from one place to the other because we had to also make for the twins. You know, the guys that used to dance with her. So I, said, I don't do menswear, but they were expecting it. Okay, where do we find it? <laughs> the tailors to make it? Okay, send pictures. Um, does, you know, what's up? Like, however, we made that thing work. And I, I think Mike, Michael and Francis must have put it in some box and shipped it for, off. I was praying that it represented the brand well, but we made it happen. They got the pieces, we got the press for it. It was, it was great. But imagine if we didn't have all of this. It's all oh, well, we contacted Christy Brown and they couldn't yeah, get they it couldn't, done. Yeah, yeah. So we'll use some other brand or we'll call Givenchy or whatnot and they'll deliver, you know. But that's, that's the power of partnership and having a great community. But so now I'm gonna ask you, how is it, um, what, what, what can you tell us about having a business, mm. well, as a woman, right. as, a, as a lady boss, as you are, uh, having a business in Ghana? Uh, what does that entail? I mean, how? Because I, it's 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 not easy. And I also want to say, I want I also want to ask you. Um, I mean, there's a certain kind of. It, it, I always find it very, just very strange how <laughs> Africans spend colossal amount of money, like shopping at Louis Vuitton and Fendi and everything. Those brands are great, by the way. I'm not saying that they're not. <coughs> but what I'm saying is like, then they will probably go into your Christie Brown store and then they'll be like, Ah, Aisha, give me a discount. This oh, is like, give me a discount too. So what I'm saying is, what, what do you, how does that make you feel? Because as a designer, you, I mean, you've worked hard and, and, and you know what I mean? And you've put, and it's been, I think, probably even more so difficult for you to even do what you're doing yeah, here, it's you know? Sweat and so how do you, and how do you respond to families that? Families that like this feeds, right? So when, when people don't appreciate what we do, to be honest, it hurts. Like in the past, maybe it hurts a lot more. Now it's, ah. Uh, Sorry, yeah. we have overheads. Sorry, you just, you know, roll with the punches. But as a creative, it's like, oh, so don't you appreciate all this work that goes into this or the thought process that goes into getting one piece out? Secondly, we're working directly with, it, it's not like we're producing in some factory somewhere where we don't know the faces. We're working directly with people who are probably heads of their families yeah. and they, they rely on their constant salaries to, to, you know, feed their families and so on. So. Some, somehow it's like, but you learn to, you know, shrug it off. Um, our business is run by two women at the helm. So it's myself and Vanessa. Is so basically, it's a, it's a, it's a woman. It's a strictly woman-owned business at the moment. We, you would find that culturally, it's when you're working with your like tailors or or, or, or men, you know, they take instructions from us differently, mm -hmm. and it's not as I don't know, it's not as seamless when you're working with people maybe of a certain background or educational you know, level. 
But after some time, they come to realize or recognize that, no, you know what? This is where it's coming from. This is the boss. If you don't listen, you know, there are repercussions to it. Um, I know women can, we can be funny bosses as well. We can be difficult. Yeah. Like, I'm sure I have like two or three assistants, past and present here. And I hear they call me Miranda behind. <laughs> I know, can you imagine? They call me Miranda and they said I have my moments on Monday mornings. Because I'm hot. You see, I have, I have three. I have three. I have three yes, kids. by the way, Aisha has done all of this and she has three children. Yes. yes. I have three kids. And can you imagine maybe what I've dealt with over the weekend and I come in and you guys don't have certain things ready? Of course, the blastings will come. But my two questions are like future forward kind of questions. One, if you weren't doing what you're doing now, what would you be doing? Um, and then two, if you could dress anybody in the world, oh, wow. dead or alive, I'm going to make it even harder for you, <laughs> who would it be? Um, if I wasn't doing fashion, I'd probably want to work in like advertising or communications. Um, yes, that's probably what I'd, I'd be doing and I'd love. Um, who would I like to dress? Oh, guys, there's a lot. There, there's, so, there's so many women's women. Marie Humbert. Marie right, Humbert. Right, right. Oh, Marie. There's, Marie, there's, this, there's Marie. this actress. Do you know her? <laughs> it's Marie. Um, oh wow. I mean, there are lots. Juicy. I, I, I honestly can't. Everybody says that Michelle Obama says, but I actually love her. And the. There, no, there's so many. Do you know, I can't even say, both from here. Sometimes it's even women I see in town, but I may not know their names or anything, but they have yeah, that, yeah. that swag, that yeah. zhuzh about them and that inner grit that I like. And I just feel like, oh, the Christy Brown pieces look so nice on you. Or this person will wear it so well. Or she has amazing style that I'd love to see my pieces on her. So I, I, I don't know. It's just, it has to... It's, it's, it's those girls, you know, those, those women who have that, that thing, that X factor. Um, but I wanted to ask you, what um, important piece of advice do you have for young, emerging, inspiring designers, Ghanaian, Ghanaian designers? I think I mentioned. Sorry? I, I think I mentioned, but yeah, another thing true. is, this is but like the three, time. If you had three things to say. Wow. If you had three things to say to an aspiring. They should disrupt. If, if they're young enough, have nothing to lose, just honestly don't toe the line. Don't kind of do what, you know, other brands have done or you've seen that, okay, this is a Christy Brown model, this is a Pistis model, this is a whatnot, it's Bello Edu model, it works, let me do the same thing. Just bring some newness to the space because we all get bored. We all are looking for some newness or the new cool brand that we can, there, there's a market for it. And... Yes, you can go crazy with it, but eventually you know how to make it commercial enough. But get our attention by disrupting this fashion space. We are ready. That's one thing. I talked about them like interning and almost like understudying others who've already done it and clipping those wings a bit. You know, you know, still be confident, still do your millennial thing, but just um, be humble enough to take in and absorb as much as you can hone in on your craft and just perfect that, that everyone will see that, no, this, this, this person has a beautiful mind. So that's, I, I think that's what we should all be looking for in new brands that are springing up. I'm looking, up, I'm looking for that. But I have a few that, you know, should be coming up soon. <laughs> who, who passed yeah, like through <laughs> Christy Brown and this and so on. I'm actually, you, you know, in the coming years, you would see, yeah. you would see like, yeah. a, you know, a new wave of, of designers from Ghana and who put Ghanaian fashion on, on the yeah. map in a different way. In a different way. It, yes. In the way, yeah, in the I'm, way that I'm it should. Quite, you know, yeah. If you, could, if you could go back in time mm. and ask, no, and tell your younger self something, what would that be? Oh, travel more. Travel, travel more, more. Travel more. Like that was your issue when you were younger? No, no, no. Now I'll tell myself. Because oh, okay, now okay, like, okay. I can't, you know, I can't <laughs> go anywhere without <laughs> figuring out like, where you're leaving, you know, people behind and there's a whole business yeah. and, you know. But um, travel more, experience more yeah. before the um, responsibilities, the yeah. huge responsibilities hit. Because growing up sucks, if you ask me. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> growing up yeah. sucks and... You know, like w when, when I launched the brand, I was so naive. I didn't think of, oh, like a business and how profitable is, is it going to be. I wasn't scared one bit. It was really more like, 
oh, well, the show be be nice, or you know, well, people like the pieces, but it wasn't it wasn't the kind of issues we have now. I was totally naive. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't have started if I knew how broke I was going to be for <laughs> for the, like all, all those years, like running around going to tailors, and then your friends out of uni. You know, in their first jobs, their cars and stuff. And yeah, no, I have this brand I'm building. Oh, Christy Brown. If, if I knew that, I probably wouldn't have said. So, yeah, like, as, you know, I would have told my young self, just travel more, experience so much more. Just, just do, you know, whatever it is that you have on your heart. Satisfy that passion. Well, thank you all so much for coming. So, I have a couple of things to say to you. There is an amazing, uh, we've set up an amazing pop-up little shopping experience in the library inside, uh, front back, with exclusive pieces from Christy Brown. Yes. So please go and check out the space and shop if you want to shop yes. because there are beautiful pieces there. If you're there. wondering how to support the brand. You know. There you go. There you go. <laughs> this, is a, this is a way to do it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and then... <laughs> I want to thank you all for taking the time and coming. Um, I guess. I, Thanks for having me. No, no, wait, wait, wait. I'm, I'm not. I'm, 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 I'm coming to you. I'm coming to I you. <laughs> and uh, I want to thank Front Back because honestly, this is uh, this has always been a safe space, and it's it has always been a, like it's my favorite space in in Ghana. So I want to thank Front Back for for allowing us to to do this here. I want to thank Aisha, obviously, because you're lovely, you're beautiful, you're inspiring, you're wonderful, you're amazing. I could go on and on and on. I hope that everybody is leaving tonight like inspired and informed and, you know, and challenged as well. Uh, that's the aim of, of, of this, of what we're doing. Thank Enjoy. you, guys. Now, Timo, I can't go on. 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 I can't